I've made a piece of software that has tested almost 5 million different shield configurations in Elite Dangerous in nine distinct situations to try and determine which combinations of engineering modifications and special effects give you the best possible shields in Elite Dangerous. Today's video is sponsored by Secret Lab. We all strive for the best possible gaming experience, but the importance of a good quality chair is often underestimated. Secret Lab produces some of the most comfortable and high quality gaming chairs you can get. So upgrade your commander chair today and fly in style and comfort. Follow the link in the video description to their store, type in your height, your weight, and it will tell you which chairs fit you for the best possible seating experience. Hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous without with us. Do I've run the tests, I've done the analysis, and it's finally time for me to show you what I've come up with and what I found doing my analysis of how you build the strongest shield in Elite Dangerous. Testing all this and developing this software and figuring out all the math behind it has been a lot of work. It's taking me a month of my free time to figure this out. So before we start, I just want to ask you guys, please go down and hit the subscribe button. It would mean a lot to me. But let's dive into it. What you see here is the main program. There's several sub-modules, but this is the main program. You don't have to understand this if you want to dive into it a little bit more deeper. It's linked in the description. It's open source. Um, you just don't get downloaded off the GitHub page. So you can go and have a look at it yourself um, and install it, run it yourself, run your own tests. Um, I just quickly, before we start, I just want to mention that it is a multi-parallel program and I've I've throttled this back a little bit because I don't want it to run full tilt when I'm recording, so that will mess up my recording. So it is running a little slower than it normally would, um, which of course all depends on your computing power. But I'm doing a video later on where I'm going to go into a lot more detail of how this is built, all the different modules. So if you want to get your hands on this and do your own modifications to it or are just interested in how I've built the software, then I'm going to do a technical video where I'm going to deep dive into that in a little bit. But the most important thing you really have to understand is just this simple file here. This is a configuration file that I've built that basically does the initial setup for how the test is run. For instance, here I set the number of shield boosters that is on a given uh, ship. Um, what it basically does is it takes all the different shield boosters with their stats. Um, and then I give it as just shield generators with their stats. And then it fits different shield boosters and it put different engineering modifications on them. And it figures out what gives the best combination in terms of engineering modifications in a specific situation. And of course, here you set how many shield boosters you have fitted on your ship. Here we can set the um, explosive DPS, kinetic, thermal, and absolute DPS. So that's just the amount of damage, the amount of incoming damage of the different damage types. Finally, down here, we have a damage effectiveness. This is basically a percentage. Um, so this case is 25%. It's a, like a, a factor that, sh that shows how much of the time on average you're being shot at. If, I mean, if, of course, if you're being shot at all the time, constantly getting hammered, for instance, something like bi we would never be a, a option, but that's not realistic. I mean, when you're out fighting in conflict zone or a hash risk site or something like that, or fighting Thargoids, we're going to look at Thargoids in a bit, actually. You're not getting shot at all the time. You have time when you are not engaging someone and there your shield will have time to recharge. To try and simulate that, I've implemented this damage effectiveness, which basically means that in 25% of the time, you're being shot at. And I mentioned the remaining 75%, your shield generator will have a chance to regenerate a shield. And all this is modeled in the software. It's trying to, it's calculating your shield recharge and your um, and your damage taken and all that stuff is uh, is being calculated. Basically, what we do is we just set this uh, this little test here, and we can go over to uh, to the main program when uh, we can execute it. Um, and it now begins to uh, to sit here and run the test. You can see it's calculating that it will have to do three thousand five hundred builds in this case. Of course, we only have two shield boosters, so it doesn't really have to do that many. And um, as soon as it's done, which it is right there, it returns and it gives us a result. You should fit biweaves reinforced with fast charge, and you should fit two resistance augmented with thermal block. Quite interesting it goes with thermal block because the meta is often around going with super capacitor in all situations. 
Um, but here it actually wants us to go thermal block. We can see the total shields down here. We can see the shield generator, uh, yeah, shield uh, regenerate here, and we can see the explosive resistance. We can see the kinetic resistance and the thermal resistance um, down here at the bottom. So we get the basic stats. I should say that the, the stats here is built on an anaconda with a top level shield. So it would either fill a biweave, a prismatic, or a A graded shield generator. Let's try to just move some of this around. Let's say, um, I mean, often NPCs they will not do that much um, can, uh, explosive damage. They will often wait with their missiles and explosive damage until the shields are down. So we can try to see what happens if we don't receive any explosive damage at all, but we only get kinetic and thermal damage. And just to make it uh, a fair test, I've added up so the total DPS we're receiving is the same, and the results are in. And you can see it keeps the, um, the biweaves and the fast charge, um, but it's now switched over from reinforced to uh, to thermal resistance because suddenly we we don't have to worry about the explosive so it can focus a lot more on only two damage types meaning it goes for a more resistant heavy build and you can also see the resistance uh the, the, the two shield boosters are still resistance augmented but they're now being swapped over to force block obviously it's trying to to patch that whole a hole we have in our force block it's at 50 percent, which to be honest is pretty good but you can see your resistance is down here and it overall is done uh done a pretty good job of balancing out the balancing out the resistances in this case to get a little bit of confidence in the program and to get an idea if it's actually doing it right if it's doing what it's supposed to do i thought it would take a use case that's very easy to figure out uh, yourself without using any software so i've done a situation you can see here we're running seven shield uh, boosters this time so this test is of course a screenshot of the final results because this would take quite a bit of time to execute and what i've done is i've just gone with a hundred DPS of absolute damage. So this is basically simulating a smaller Thargoid, like a Cyclops maybe. I don't know exactly how much damage they do when they shoot at you. Um, it's potentially more than 100, I think. It's just to put in some numbers here. And then I've set the damage effectiveness really low down to 10% because at least when I'm fighting Thargoids, I often spend a lot of time flying away from them, running away, dealing with the swarm or not really getting shot at. So I'm spending a lot of time where I can recharge my shield but when I am being shot at, the incoming damage is quite high. So if we go down and look at the result, we can see in this case, it went for bi-weaves, reinforced and fast charge with heavy duty super capacitors on all shield boosters. So that makes sense if you, for instance, have been looking at what uh, AXI, the anti seno initiative, they're doing on their builds. Well, on the smaller, more maneuverable ships that is designed to maybe fight the smaller or the more easy Thargoids, they're doing exactly this. They're going for bi-weaves, fast charge, reinforced and then heavy duty supercapacitors on all shield boosters. Then I changed the test up a little bit. I have just turned up the damage, doubled it, 200 incoming DPS. This is a lot of damage. Um, the damage effectiveness is the same, shield booster count is the same, and I ran this test. So this is kind of simulating now a more difficult Thargoid with more damage. Scrolling down to the results, we can see that now it swaps over for, um, for reinforced um, with prismatics, as prismatic reinforced with high caps, and then we're staying with the heavy duty supercapacitors, and exactly as we would expect, it's not doing anything to buffer resistances, but as the damage goes up, um, it's much more important that we have a high hit point pool that's going to allow us to, uh, to survive because the shields are just not able to regenerate fast enough to compensate for the incoming damage. And again, if we go and look at what the Antecedent Initiative is doing, exactly the same thing here. On the larger ships, they are going prismatic reinforced high caps, whereas again, as I said, on smaller ships, they are going bi-weave. So it seems like it is doing something right. But let's dive into some of the real results where there's some real meat on it here. And that is, of course, when we're trying to fight NPCs. Now, I don't know exactly how much damage an NPC does or what the damage distribution is, how much thermal, how much kinetic does they do. So what I did was I took my cubecomber, my PVE Corvette, and I looked at the damage output of that. And I would say, OK, how would I build the strongest shield against that specific ship? And for all of these tests that we're going to look at from now on, what I have done is I've run four separate tests. I run two with seven shield boosters, one at 25% efficiency and one at 50% efficiency. And I've also been running one with L2 with eight shield boosters, again, one with 25 and one with 50 to try and see how that affects uh, and change the outcome. And just quickly, without further ado, gonna put the results up here so you can see them. They are not that interesting, to be honest. I mean, if you look at them, pretty much what it's saying, well, there's some interesting parts here, actually. It says prismatic reinforced high caps in all four situations. And then it just wants us to fit three resistance augmented with thermal block. Once again, this thermal block pops up. We also saw it before they had thermal block and force block both popping up here. It doesn't really seem to want to put supercapacitors on the resistance augmented. It always wants to put these 
um, resistance specific experimental effects on the shield boosters, or at least on the resistance augmented one. But in this case, what it pretty much does is it fits three resistance augmented with thermal blocks in all the situations. If you're going to build a ship that's going to be battling against uh, um, the cucumber, more specifically, prismatic reinforced high caps, and then this loadout for your shield boosters seems to be uh, the best way to go. But again, the, the cucumber build is quite a high DPS build. I mean, it definitely does more DPS than the average NPC will do. Uh, even some of the more difficult NPCs, it will definitely be able to out damage. So I try to dial back the damage a little bit and then spread it out evenly. So here we have, I'm gonna look at some results for when you do 33 damage uh, on both explosive, kinetic and thermal, adding up to 99 or well, almost 100. And just see what happens. Now, if we start by looking at the situation with 50% efficiency, well, this looks very familiar. You can see once again, we're looking at prismatic reinforced high caps with three resistance augmented and three thermal blocks. Pattern beginning to emerge here. And exactly the same thing happens uh, when we go up to eight. And again, there's just fit, fit one additional heavy duty supercapacitor. However, if we dial back the damage efficiency to 25%, so if we're able to stay out of the line of fire for 75% of the time, then things begin to happen. You can see here that in both of the cases now, it's going with biweaves now, reinforced fast charge. So suddenly it's going away from the from the prismatic and high damage, or sorry, high hit point build over to a fast recharge build with the biweaves fast charge. It still keeps the reinforced. Keep that in mind. It it always not always, but in most cases, it stays with this reinforced, regardless of whether it goes bioweaves or prismatics. The shield boosters has also received quite an overhaul. Now we only have a single heavy duty supercapacitor, and the rest is filled out with resistance augmented. And again, the thermal block pops up once again. Now it's worth noticing that the overall shield hit point that the, you can see down here, the shield hit points total is more than halved for this. Just shy of two thousand is probably a little bit less than I'm comfortable flying with, I think. Again, if the resistances are good, which they are, they are really, really good resistances, it might not, it might actually work. But again, as we talked about before, NPCs seem to often hold back on their missiles and a lot of the explosive damage when your shield is still up. So let's try to see what happens if we remove the, um, the explosive damage and just go 50 kinetic and 50 thermal. Let's quick look at the 50% scenario, again, where we're being shot at 50% of the time. Once again, same story, we're seeing this build once again pop up with the prismatics reinforced high caps, resistance augmented, thermal block time three, and the rest is heavy duty supercapacitors. Then let's go over and see what happens on the other side. Well, not a lot really happened over here um, either. The only thing is that it's now because the damage is now being more focused in only two, um, it's not as heavy, it's not going as heavy into resistances. Um, it's going a little bit more in um, in the heavy duty or the hit point Y way and with the, it added that extra heavy duty um, super capacitor shield booster that we talked about before I would feel a bit more comfortable with so if we disregard the explosive damage which to be honest I mean our explosive resistance is still up in the 70 plus or plus 75 actually so they're still really really good and not going to do a lot of damage to us as you can see it's pretty much the same builds that uh, that pops up again with again with the thermal block that keeps uh, keeps showing up so in one final attempt to try and make this thing do something different <laughs> for once, I try to see what would happen if we did an imbalanced um, damage distribution, because I sometimes feel like the NPCs maybe use lasers a little bit more than they use um, kinetic weapons. So I try to do a 60-40 um, a split on the damage with 60 DPS coming in from thermal and 40 coming in from kinetic. Again, we're keeping at the same total DPS to make the um, the builds as comparable as possible. Now, with the 50% damage effectiveness, the story is the same. We're seeing this build again, prismatic reinforced high caps, three with um, resistance thermal blocks, and the rest is just heavy duty supercapacitors. Going over to the 25%, where we are mitigating a lot of damage by not being shot at, we finally get what I was out looking for, seeing what it would take. And um, we get that biweave thermal um, resistance fast charge, which in my mind has always been a really good build, but it took quite a bit of effort to try and get the program to actually get the, this build out. So it might not be as good as I initially thought. But you can see we're back to the again, resistance augmented thermal block is once again popping up. Um, and again, the single uh, heavy duty supercapacitor is, uh, is showing up here. Um, again, again, now it's really going heavy, heavy into thermal resistance. You see we're up to what, almost 70 on the, the seven, over 70, 
uh, percent on uh, with eight shield boosters. So resistances are really, really being pushed high here to to mitigate those uh, seventy, uh, sorry, sixty incoming um, thermal uh, DPS. So conclusion time. What is the best possible shields you can do in Elite Dangerous? Well, it seems that in the vast majority of cases, and if shit hits the fan, that there's a lot of sh people shooting at you, especially if you're fighting multiple people where you're not going to be able to reach out that much shield, your best bet is to go Prismatic Reinforced High Cap with three Resistance Augmented Thermal Block Shield Boosters and the rest of your Shield Boosters filled out um, with Heavy Duty Super Capacitors. There are in rare situations where you can go by weaves reinforced fast charge and then go with two heavy duty super capacitors and then the rest being resistance augmented uh, thermal block. But I think the main thing we should take away from this is that the meta as it's been so far where people are just stacking heavy duty super capacitors or resistance augmented super capacitors may not be the best way to go. It seems it's often better to go with always keep the reinforced as you're uh, engineering on your shield generator and then put thermal block on all your resistance augmented to patch that hole in your thermal resistance. That's the result that the program has shown me and unless I've made a mistake and trust me I've spent a lot of time to debug this because I was really surprised when I saw these results. I've been looking for a mistake, I've been checking my numbers and I've been checking them twice and I'm almost certain that I have, at least I haven't been able to find anything. Again, the software is, is available in the um, in the description of this video, and I really invite you to go out, download it for yourself, look through the code if you're proficient with it, and if you spot a mistake or if you spot a bug somewhere or something that doesn't work as a, or, or anything, let me know, and I will do an update video with new results if I, if anything else comes out. One final thing here before we end, I just quickly want to mention that the whole program here is written in PowerShell. And if you're interested in getting into uh, to coding, I just want to mention that there is a really good crash course over on uh, on Skillshare. I know they're not the sponsor of this video, but I just want to mention it anyway. I have a link in the description where you can go and you can sign up and you get like a few months for free. So if you want to get into this kind of stuff, you want to know how to build these kind of software yourself. There's a course over there that's going to teach you the basics and get you up to speed really quick, at least. So you're good enough that you can begin to uh, to modify this software for your own needs. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a like. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. And until next time, I will see you guys in space.